Okay, and we are live. Welcome back, everybody, to our second episode of Why I'm Not an Atheist. And this video, this talk is absolutely brilliant. If you're an atheist, this will get you to at least consider there is a God. If you're an agnostic, this will and may convince you that there absolutely is a God. If you're an anti-Christian or believe in any other faith systems, this may prove to you that Jesus is the one true God. And if you are a Christian, this will increase your faith and trust in God. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Before that, welcome everybody. I'm Vince Rebel. Welcome to Man After God, where we take current events and questions that you may be asking and analyze them from a biblical perspective. We want to know what does God and the Bible have to say about this? And if you are in the Toronto area and would like to join us for church, please join us this Sunday at 145 p.m. at Conquer Assembly. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Because the irony of the atheist position here is evident. My atheist friends, and I have many of them, tell me that the driving force of evolution, which eventually produced our human cognitive faculties, reason included, was not primarily concerned with truth at all, but with survival. And we all know, ladies and gentlemen, what has often happened and still happens to truth when individuals or commercial enterprises or nations feel themselves threatened and struggle for survival. A leading philosopher Alvin Plantinga of Notre Dame says if atheists are right that we are the product of mindless, unguided natural processes, then they have given us strong reason to doubt the reliability of human cognitive faculties and therefore inevitably to doubt the validity of any belief that they produce, including their atheism. Their biology and their belief in naturalism would therefore appear to be at war with each other in a conflict that has nothing at all to do with God. Yet my atheist friends still insist that it is rational for them to believe that the evolution of human reason was not directed for the purpose of discovering truth. And yet it is irrational for me to believe that human reason was designed and created by God to enable us to understand and believe the truth. Curious logic. By contrast with that, biblical theism asserts that ultimate reality is personal and intelligent and the reason science works and this was the motivating force that drove the great pioneers of science is that the universe out there and the human mind in here that does the science are ultimately the product of the same intelligent divine mind. Human beings are made, we are told, in God's image and that means that science can be done. That makes infinitely more sense to me as a scientist than atheism does. Now let me come briefly to ethics. Ethical behavior, like rational behavior, of course, does not itself require religious belief. This is consistent with the fact that humans are created in God's image as rational moral persons. But just as I suggest that rationality cannot be explained without the existence of God, so I dare to suggest that the existence of morality cannot be explained either. As modern science sprang from Judeo-Christian sources, so did the concept of human equality. Listen to atheist Jürgen Habermas, arguably one of Germany's leading intellectuals. He said that universalistic egalitarianism from which sprang the ideals of freedom and a collective life and solidarity, the individual morality of conscience, human rights and democracy is the direct legacy of the Judaic ethic of justice and the Christian ethic of love. This legacy, substantially unchanged, has been the object of continual critical appropriation and reinterpretation. To this day, there's no alternative to it. Everything else is just idle postmodern talk. And it seems to me he's hitting the core of something important. Because the value of a human being on which such egalitarianism rests is based not on what the human being can do, but what she's made of, or how she's made in God's image. I never forget speaking on one of my many visits to Russia uh, to a colleague in the Academy of Sciences. And he said, you know, John, we thought we could abolish God and retain a value for human beings. We found we couldn't, and we murdered millions of them. And Alexander Solzhenitsyn has said, if I'm asked, why is it that 60 million of my fellow countrymen were sacrificed? He said, the answer is, we have forgotten God. Science, of course, marvelous as it is, is limited. Even a Nobel Prize winner, by analyzing a cake, cannot tell why it was made. But Aunt Matilda, who made it, can tell you. She can reveal it to you. But if she doesn't reveal it to you, you'll never know. And that brings me to be my next evidence. It's the same with the universe. We can analyze it magnificently, but ultimately, if it has a maker, and I believe it has, only he can tell us what it's all about. And he's done so in the powerful narrative of the Bible, in particular in its analysis of the problem with humanity, not simply in terms of behavioral breakdown between people, but a vertical breakdown of trust between us and the Creator. The unique solution to that problem 
is not simply in terms of human ethical development, although that's very important, but in terms of something far deeper altogether. The restoration of the fractured relationship with God through the salvation he has brought through Jesus Christ. A radical relationship that empowers us to live ethically from God. And here we reach what for me is the chief evidence, not only for the existence but the nature of God. It is Jesus Christ. He it was who not only taught the golden rule but embodied it, fed the hungry, healed the sick and suffering and welcomed society's outcasts, brought honour and respect to the marginalised and he's brought forgiveness and peace to multi-millions around the world. He's able to do this of course because though he was a man, he uniquely never was only a man but God become human. The central evidence for this startling... Okay, so we'll break this down really in five points. I have five points here for you. And the first one really here at the five minute mark, you see John Lennox begins this segment by arguing that morality and ethical behavior find their truest basis in the belief that humans are made in the image of God. So this first point is the foundation of ethics and human value in theism. And it is found when we see ourselves our inherent value in the fact that we are made in the image of God. And John Lennox here notes that ethical behavior can exist without religious belief. He's not denying that. But the concept of intrinsic human value on which ideas like human rights and justice are built derives directly from the Judeo-Christian view of humanity's worth. He talks here about this German philosopher, Jürgen Habermas. He points out that the modern ideals of freedom, conscience, Human rights stem from Judeo-Christian ethics. We never had these things without being derived from a Christian worldview, just like what it says in Genesis 1.27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. The, the doctrine of imago Dei, or the image of God, is fundamental in this theology and in life because it grounds human dignity, human worth, human morality, and human responsibility. It's the foundation of those things. And this belief contrasts sharply with this secular atheistic worldview that cannot ascribe intrinsic value to humans, to humanity, in a consistent and ultimate sense. Number two, the consequence of losing God in society and moral failure of society because of that. So here, John Lennox then recalls an encounter with this Russian colleague who notes that the Soviets attempted to remove God and in doing so it devalued human life. It resulted in millions of death and we saw that happen in the Soviet Union. He, he references Russia's moral collapse and the violence that happened and they were rooted in pushing God away, not bringing God in. And really this point emphasizes that when society abandons God, they lose the basis for valuing and protecting human life. And this will lead to moral decay. In Proverbs 14, 34, it reads, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin condemns any people. You see, the Bible teaches us that God's moral law revealed in scripture is the true foundation of justice, compassion, and social welfare. When a society, when a country forsakes this very foundation, it experiences moral and spiritual breakdown. When you, we remove God from cultural ethics, it leaves a vacuum, a relative and subjective vacuum. And this allows oppressive and evil standards to take over, oftentimes that we've seen in history, to tragic effect. Number three, the limits of science and the need for divine revelation. So John Lennox uses this analogy of an aunt who bakes a cake to illustrate the limits of scientific inquiry because although we can analyze that cake and how much sugar is in that cake and the elements of that cake and, and perhaps how that cake was made, we cannot ultimately ascribe the purpose of that cake, the why of that cake. And ultimately, humans are looking for that why. Many of you have asked the question, why do I exist? And there's a reason why you ask that question because there's a reason why you exist. There's a purpose why you exist. And science, although we can analyze the cake's ingredients, it cannot determine the purpose or meaning. And in a sense that although science can observe reality in the material world, it cannot ascribe the why. And atheism will never be able to ascribe the why we exist. It cannot determine purpose or meaning. Only God can, just like only the baker can. In the same manner that God reveals the why. And John Lennox here suggests that the same principles applies to the universe. While science can uncover facts about the cosmos, it cannot explain why it exists. Why does the universe exist? Why does the earth exist? What is its ultimate purpose? What is your ultimate purpose? Only God 
as creator can reveal this purpose to humanity, can reveal your purpose to you. Romans 1 20 reads, for since the creation of the world's God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature have clearly been seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. We see here that creation points to a creator. When you look at a watch, it points to a watchmaker. Even when you're watching this on your iPad or computer, that points to a manufacturer. Something created that. Something, someone, a team designed that. And this verse also highlights and acknowledges the nature alone cannot fully reveal God's purpose, that nature, we can see God in nature. There's something called special revelation where the truth is revealed in scripture, in Christ, in our relationship with God, in order that we may understand God's intentions for humanity and creation. My fourth point here, the Bible analyzes the human condition and the need for redemption. John Lennox describes the Bible's unique diagnosis of humanity's deepest problems as a, a breakdown in relationship between people and God. Not merely interpersonal moral failings, although we have that, but it's a result of our moral failing and breakdown with our relationship with God. When our relationship with God is restored, then our relationship with others can also be restored. And he argues that the ultimate solution is not merely ethical improvement, because we've done that all throughout society. And even a hundred years from now, two hundred years from now, we're going to look back and we're going to say, hey, that was unethical. It's constantly evolving. But what is needed ultimately is the reconciliation with God that Jesus alone offers. This restoration with God transforms individuals from the inside out. It enables true ethical living in a way that mere human effort cannot achieve. We know, you know, that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us have fallen short. All of us have done evil, have lied, have stolen, have cheated, have done something terrible in our lives. And this diagnosis of the fallen condition of mankind is seen throughout psychology. This teaches us that sin has disrupted not only individual lives, but all of creation. And that's why we see so much hurt and pain in this world, that redemption is needed. It is necessary for reconciling humanity to God. And how is this accomplished? This is accomplished through Jesus Christ, whose work on the cross 2,000 years ago addresses both our ethical failures and our broken relationship with God. And that can be reconciled. Five, Jesus Christ as the ultimate evidence of God's nature. John Lennox here talks about a God-man, Jesus Christ, as the ultimate evidence of God's existence and nature. He describes how Jesus embodied God's love through his compassion for the marginalized, his care for the suffering, his invitation to those on the fringes of society that many of us and especially way back then when Jesus came, were looked down on. We know that the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus revealed God's character and provides the foundation for Christian faith and ethics because it offers an unparalleled view of divinity, divine love, and divine justice. John 14, 9 says, Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Christ is the fullest revelation of God, displaying his love, justice, mercy, grace through his earthly life and ministry. The incarnation, which is the doctrine that God became man in Jesus, is foundational, showing that God is not distant, but has entered into human suffering to provide salvation. You see, my friends, you may be going through suffering. You may be asking, why does God allow this? Well, he allows it also because he gives us free well, but he also enters it by sharing that suffering with us. Finally, John Lennox here develops this brilliant argument for the necessity of a theistic worldview for a coherent basis on morality, ethics, human value. He emphasizes here that, in fact, the Christian worldview, rooted in the belief that humans are made in the image of God, provides the only consistent foundation for valuing human life and establishing justice. The Bible reveals both the depth of humanity's separation from God and the radical reconciliation offered through Jesus Christ. And science, while it is powerful, observable, has its limits. And the ultimate purpose of life and creation is disclosed through God's self revelation in scripture and the personhood of Jesus Christ. All of this sets up the significance of Jesus' work on the cross where he fully reveals God's love and justice by taking himself, the sins of the world, everything wrong that we've done, and the penalty necessary to redeem that sin, to have justice for that sin, and this sacrifice 
2,000 years ago, not only reconciles humanity to God, but also empowers us as believers to live transformed lives. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. 1 Peter 3.18 This finished work grants believers forgiveness, acceptance, and peace with God, addressing the deepest needs of the human heart and securing hope for eternity and enabling us to experience victory in this life. Well, there you guys have it. I hope you have been blessed wherever you are. God bless you. Remember that you are more than conquerors in Christ. Have a great day. Have a great afternoon. Have a great evening wherever you are, and we will see you again soon. Bye for now.